Hi, I'm Kat Burton. I identify as a transgender woman. I work as a flight instructor at Aeros Cardiff and also as an independent aviation and uh, diversity consultant. I should have known that I was going to transition at the age of 14, but it was such a horrific prospect at the time. I looked like what I was, a 14-year-old rugby playing schoolboy in a frock, and it just put me off completely, and I locked it away in, in a box marked Do Not Open. And that box remained locked until I was in my late 50s. I was convinced at the time that as an airline pilot, it would be a career-breaking move to transition at work. But then I was fortunate to meet two transgender pilots, and they both transitioned successfully at work and with the support of their colleagues and management. And then by sheer chance, I was grounded by the Civil Aviation Authority, who'd found something unusual in my heart trace when I had an ECG at a routine medical. I simply couldn't console myself at having to go back to being him. And I realised that if I tried to go back to work as him, I would fail. I wouldn't pass the simulator tests, which I'd need to get current again. Uh, I'd be simply too psychologically damaged to, to be able to do that. So I phoned British Airways up and said, it's going to be Kat who comes back to work and the reaction was priceless. The manager who was looking after my absence said, oh thank God for that Kat. All that work I've done through the summer to find out how to bring you back as Kat isn't going to go to waste. And I was supported in that at that level from that moment on. It literally was the best four years of my flying career until I finally retired last year. I had a Welsh pathway to follow which is very convoluted compared to the English. My GP couldn't refer me direct to a gender identity clinic. I had to be referred to the local mental health care team. That mental health care professional had to refer me to her supervisor for money and then back to her for the ability to refer me to a single gender identity clinic, which is in Charing Cross Clinic. They then took their usual 15 months to even respond to the fact that I'd been referred. I couldn't have been quicker or easier in terms of the way I whistled through Charing Cross. Uh, literally three appointments and I was done with them. I'm really keen to see the Welsh pathway improved. The model that we're going to have fairly soon of local uh, GPs with a special interest um, who get some extra training to allow them to conduct most of the healthcare for their transgender patients locally and only refer on to surgery or endocrinology as needed and a centre of excellence in Cardiff to support them. I think that's really the way to go. Every single GP should appreciate that they're going to have transgender patients and they should educate themselves. There's lots of online training materials they can use. It's all accredited stuff. And if every single GP knew what a transgender patient needed, that would improve healthcare going forward. It's primary healthcare that they need. It's usually an afternoon at most to get au fait with what transgender patients need, both when they're transitioning and after transition long term. Well, I'm 66 now and uh, obviously still working really hard. I'm doing 70 or 80 hour working weeks. Growing old is something that still seems to me to be something that's very far distant. They say 60 is the new 40. Well, yeah, I'm pretty much in agreement with that. I'm surrounded by family, uh, but eventually let's assume that I'm all on my own in a care home. And I think that's the point at which dignity raises its head because transgender people do have needs which aren't necessarily obvious to care workers. A transgender woman that suddenly isn't capable of looking after their facial hair in the way that they've grown accustomed to, or a transgender woman that has to wear a wig and has to be seen then by care workers without it, who may not perhaps take the greatest of care in presenting them for the other people living in the home. I think there are some very specific needs about uh, aging transgender people some of which may be best addressed by having quite specific care homes. But uh, for me anyway, that seems to be 20 or 30 years hence. And I've never been much to look that far in the future.